Okay, still, let's get started. I want to welcome uh, everybody to another wonderful Cafecito Chats. Today we have a special, a special session. And we have uh, the topic at hand of ship at the national level for professionals and students. What do you get? Why should you be involved, right? That's the broad topic today for Cafecito Chats. But uh, once again, uh, welcome to Cafecito Chats. We are literally kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month 2024. If you're aware of Hispanic Heritage Month, it runs from September 15th to October 15th. So if you weren't aware, now you know. So there you go. Celebrate as much as possible uh, and indicate and share with other individuals that might not be necessarily uh, aware of what Hispanic Heritage Month is or how it runs, right? Um, to do a quick introduction, welcome SHIP CEO Susana Valdez Wolf, who has over 30 years of experience in the public, nonprofit, and private sectors, including several roles in public service, serving in the House of Representatives, the U.S. Senate, the White House, and the Department of Labor. She has also served as an advisor uh, for many more than a dozen NGO boards. She excels in leadership and team development, strategic planning, fundraising, and philanthropy, coalition building, and process integration. Susana comes to SHIP most recently as a founding member of Partners for Nonprofits, an advisory firm dedicated to advancing the mission of nonprofit organizations. Prior to that role, she serves as a as the first ever chief impact officer at Taproot Foundation. And before that, she spent nearly 11 years at the Adrian Arst Center of the Performing Arts, raising over $40 million during her tenure. She also has extensive experience working in the public sector, including the White House and a master's in public administration from Columbia University. Susana currently lives in Miami with her husband and her son. Welcome everybody to Cafecito Chats. It's such a pleasure to have you all here and more importantly to be able to hear and touch base with Susana, the CEO of SHIP. So for this particular event and topic, I'll start it off with a little bit of an icebreaker for today, right? So Susana, this question goes to you. Uh, you walk into a room and there are three tables with the following people on it. Table one, Emiliano Zapata, Pedro Infante, and Frida Kahlo. Table two, Cesar Chavez, Selena Quintanilla, and Cantinflas. Table three, Celia Cruz, Gloria Stefan, and Walter Mercado. My question to you is, which table do you sit at and why? That's a really great icebreaker, Lacero. Uh Wow. I, I have to remember this one. Um, so first and foremost, thank you for inviting me here. I'm looking forward to... Um, having this conversation. So I would say that uh, the table I might try first uh, would be the table with Cesar Chavez. Okay. And the reason is, is that the history of who Cesar is, what Cesar did, uh, his legacy, his impact, especially for Mexican Americans, um, I have to say is one that still uh, I remember, if you all know, of course, Dolores Huerta, who is a key part and is still a key part. I got to know Dolores as I had my time in Washington. Um, with respect to the farm worker community, I'm very close to the farm worker community here in Miami. I've known this couple, Sib and Maria Garza, if anybody knows them, who were founders of the farm worker community here and advocates for farm workers in South Florida. And for those of you that may not be uh, familiar with South Florida, the grower community, the farmers and the farm workers, historically have had a, had, had a very, I would say, tenuous relationship. And these two individuals that happened to come from Texas and from Florida organized a farm worker community, gave them, helped them with education, with health care, with um, labor issues, with housing. And so to me, it's something near and dear to my heart because with respect to farm workers, uh, La Lucha, it's still there. 
we still, there are many people that we need to help, but with respect to advocacy, I'm always looking for opportunities how I can do more and how I can help our community. So I would want to learn lessons from leaders in our community of how I can continue to be in service to our community. Thank you. That's a very great uh, reason why um, you would select to would sit select. at the table with Cesar Chavez. So that's really, really incredible, which kind of goes hand in hand with what you mentioned uh, as far as in your bio about joining SHIP, right, and helping communities and what you've been doing for the past 30 years, helping our public, our comunidad, and making sure that we have advocacy in, in various levels of government, right? And that's really good to know that you've worked at the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate and, and have you as a voice um, there for all of us, right? Part of this um, conversation is uh, you've been in the nonprofit for many years. You probably had some sort of expectation or knowledge of and from SHIP as an outside observer. How does SHIP, now that you're the CEO, meet or exceed those perceptions? And what would you suggest needs to happen in order to uh, meet more of the expectations you have of SHIP? So I would say a couple of things. Uh, number one, what incredible privilege and honor it is to come and be a part of SHIP and join Ashley, Anna, and all of our colleagues and peers and all of our members, um, our board, at this 50th anniversary of SHIP. To think that this nonprofit, what Rod Garcia and the founders, and for those of you that don't know the story, when I worked in Washington, and was doing Latino outreach for the White House more than 25 years ago, I had the privilege and honor to meet Rod and other Latino leaders, Raul Isaguirre from National Council of La Raza. Um, I think it was Belen Robles who was heading LULAC at the time. And as the primary person that was reaching out to the Latino community and advocating for the Latino community. When I met Rob and, un, I'm sorry, Rod, and understood the mission of SHIP, right? So I'm sitting there thinking of Society for Hispanic Professional and Engineers. I was like, I, I kept thinking to myself, that's very unique. That's very specific. And to me, what I didn't realize was the vision that Rod and the other founders had Fast forward 50, 60 years ago, now, fast forward to, to, to today, that these jobs, these careers are the innovation economy. These are the jobs of the future. These are the jobs and careers that can change and transform not only their lives, but the, their family lives and their community lives forever. And to me, to be here now and to, and to think about taking the baton from previous leaders, the question I ask myself, you know, if not daily, weekly, is that how can I leave SHIP in a better place? Like, how can I contribute to the mission like others did before me? How can I advance the mission? How can I advocate for the mission? And... One of the things that I have to say to you now five months into the job is I, I want everybody to know about SHIP because I understand the impact that it's having on lives. When I hear stories from members that they're the first generation college graduates and that they're now aerospace engineers, they're mechanical engineers, they're in computer science, and how their studies, their, their academic pursuits, and now their professional careers have transformed their lives. To me, that is a responsibility. It's a privilege. Um, and it's something that, um, it, it's, it's a responsibility that I take uh, very seriously. And so with five or six months in, 
I want to, going back to your question, Lacero, it's not my expectations of SHIP, but the sh expectations that SHIP have of me. And if you think about every circle of our familia, from our lifetime members, our members, our professionals, our staff, our chapter leaders, our board, it's like I have to live up to those expectations. And I think collectively, right, I always say teamwork makes the dream work that collectively we are going to chart the next at least decade for SHIP in the next year or two with a strategic plan, with being intentional about what our focus is. Lazaro, I, I, I appreciate your advocacy and everyone else on this call of the work that you all do in your communities. You know, I ask our members anytime I meet anyone, at what point in your either academic career or where in your lifeline would you have benefited from knowing about SHIP? The answer I'm getting back more and more is, Susanna, probably in middle school or in high school or like that. That So I'm really thinking about is, you know, does, where does SHIP belong in that lifeline of a student? And I always say to people, my, my one day vision is for any Latina, any Latino that's 10 or 11 years old that is really excited about studying STEM, that they know that there's a ship for them that can help support them and their family so that they can pursue those studies, right? So I, it's everybody wants to be a household name. Well, I'd like SHIP to be a household name for Latinos and Latinas who want to pursue STEM as their future. So it's a tall order, uh, but 50 years later, we think about what SHIP has accomplished and how incredible uh, when we think about 20,000 members and that those numbers just keep growing every year. We're not losing membership. We're gaining membership. So. That means to me that the mission is resonating with our community. So it's my job to figure out how many more scholarships can we give? How many more mentorships can we do? How many more community engagements can we do? How many more Noche de Ciencias and Equipando Padres? Like, how can we put more into our communities, in our regions, to help support people that want to support STEM. So I'm sorry if I went off topic. No, but you I did not. It, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And one of the things that I want to highlight, I have a list of questions here, but I'm, I'm going to follow up on what you what you mentioned. Um, I had an interview. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Rod Garcia a couple of years ago before his passing. And one of the things that he mentioned was the first thing that he talks about is the core values that SHIP has, right? It's uh, familia, education, service, resilience, right? The first one being familia. You mentioned familia. You, we talked about in your introduction about your family, your son, your husband, you live in Miami, right? I am a parent and I have two kids. I have a 16-year-old son, uh, no, I'm sorry, a 16-year-old daughter and a 17-year-old son at the moment. And as a parent, as a first generation myself, uh, I went through the struggle of trying to get to college, trying to navigate that aspect of things, right? Um, it wasn't an easy path. And you asked the question, when do you wish you would have known about SHIP, right? Well, it's too late for me to wish where I would have known SHIP. So what I did in turn is show my kids, show my son, show my daughter what SHIP is all about at an early age, from the age of six, seven years old. I would bring them to the SHIP professional meetings. I show them the path. Sometimes they would be bored out of their mind, but at the end of the day, it is what you see and what you surround yourself with that shapes who you are. And I continuously told them, you do not have to be an engineer, but the skills that I'm sharing with you here the skills that I show you through SHIP of what I know, what I do, will be transferable and adaptable to any place, any career, any objective that you put yourself into. And I told them, 
And I consistently tell them, up to now, you have to know yourself, you have to know your own core values, because there will be dark times, not only in school, but in life. And when you know yourself and you have your core values, you will be able to navigate those hard times, right? If familia is very important to you, which seems that it is for a lot of us, you will help and support your family and you will be able to navigate through those difficult times with a focus in mind of why you are doing what you're doing, why you are enduring what you're enduring, why you have to go through certain things that you're going through, right? One of the things that I've also heard in, in this, uh, this uh, goes to a lot of influencers. They focus on saying, you know, you don't have to go to college. You don't have to pursue a four-year four STEM degree education, et cetera, et cetera. I strongly disagree with that because my dad brought us to this country and he said, venimos a este país para triunfar. Part of that, his dedication was to go ahead and have us pursue an education because he said, you could lose everything, everything that's material, cars, houses, money, your money accounts could go to zero. But whatever you have here, whatever you've learned, whatever you understand, you can go ahead and pick back up and reconstruct and remake it and reshape it. So I hope that that makes sense. And the reason I gravitate so much toward CHIP is because it's not a it's not a technical school where we learn technical aspects. There are ter technical workshops, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, we learn technical stuff as engineers in school. SHIP is a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a network effort for all of us, right? I'm going to turn over to Mike Cruz because he's one of the longer standing members that I see here. And I want him to tell us how he has seen SHIP change lives, as we say in our motto. Over the last 50 years, he's been involved in SHIP for about 40, 40 plus years, 42, 43 some, some years, since the inception of SHIP San Diego Professional, right? But I want him to share some insight and ask a question of why SHIP is important and maybe share with us some of that insight. Mr. Cruz? Uh, Susanna, he always gives me five minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can have 10. No. Uh, yeah, you know, when I started it uh, in my career, it, I, I worked for the Navy for 35, 32 years and was an electronics engineer, microwave specialist. And so I grew up without ship in the 70s, the early 70s. And uh, so I didn't get involved in ship until the 80, 81. And, and th there were hardly any women in SHIP. Yes. We had some on the board at that time. Uh, I, 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 I helped two women become president of the San Diego chapter after I left. But it's been few and far in between. But overall, I, I always step back. And I'm amazed. When we had the SHIP conference, it was barely breaking 2,000. And so, I, so what's the number today? 10,000? Yes, and we our capacity, so really quickly, we're at over 6,000 registrants, and at this time last year, we were at 4,000. And so we're, we can accommodate 15,000 um, in Anaheim. So we're hoping, I mean, that that's, we hope that we don't have to turn anyone away. Well, see, see that's what's amazing to me. So from the earth, so, you know, I, I knew Rod, uh, we, we worked together in the early years, bringing the San Diego chapter together, and, and we met often at conferences and the and regionals. So my perspective today is, and I have to think really hard of all the people that I've met, that I've come in contact with over the years through SHIP, wonderful people. And, and, I, and I follow them on, online now with uh, 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 LinkedIn and, and uh whatever the, the, the other things are. So I'm watching them grow and I'm watching our community grow. And now these are just the people that I know, but now there's like 10,000 other new souls that are coming on board. So uh, I was a region two VP back in 2006 and I got to see our, our national community and it was vibrant then. I can't imagine it 
what it is today. I mean, I'm already signed up. I'm registered. I'm volunteering for the conference. I'm excited about it, and I, I know I'm going to be overwhelmed by the the, the just the, the number of folks, and hopefully to meet some people that 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 I've met in the past and 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 worked with. So I guess my astonishment is that not only the growth, but what I what was really got me in the last year or so is the organizational structure that SHIP has put together today. I am flabbergasted because in the beginning we had lowered this one secretary. We paid her minimum wage at, on Olympic Boulevard, and we had uh, 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 NBOD, and they're all volunteers. No paid, no no one was paid, and that was the beginning of it all. And then finally we got some paid CEOs, and we started to grow. But the growth was slow in the early 2000s. But now I think it's just it's it's exploding. I mean, from my point of view, I, I see this plethora of uh, when I go to the ship website and I see all these people involved at, at the board and the staff level. Come on, this is unreal. I mean, we're we're finally a, a has have an organ organizational structure that is uh, uh, like a good business model that's been put together. And so I, I'm really amazed at the, the growth of the infrastructure because we needed that. Before we were only a couple million dollars, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to ask how many were, maybe that $40 million is in range, Susanna, <laughs> or, or ship. Yep. And so to me, that, that's another level of astonishment from a couple of million to uh, uh, you know, tens of millions. And we've had corporate support all along, but we've never, invigorated them like I'm saying today. I mean, a business model needs to generate revenue. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, I, as, 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 a, as, a, as a manager of, of a laboratory, money makes things work. And so I, and every, time I, every time I log into you now for the uh, lifetime membership, oh, you want to donate $100 or 50? What? <laughs> and I'm going, yay, you know, we're finally, you know, people have money. And they say we're poor. We're not poor, you know. We and we need. And, but but the thing is, what we need to engender, Susanna, is the um, gift of giving. We need to impose upon our our people that you can give, and 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 you can plan for it, and 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 you know, quit squabbling about twenty or thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Give a hundred. Give a thousand, and and so. I think with that that uh, change in philosophy that I'm seeing with the current organization, uh, I'm I'm just thrilled, and I'm and I'm aghast, and I'm I'm, I'm taking it all in, so uh, um, I'm ready for the conference. I'm ready to meet old old people that well not old but people that I've known in the past, and meeting some new students, and so like you, Susanna, it's always wonderful to have some somebody come up to me that was been a student 20 years ago and say, hey, Mr. Cruz, thank you for your assistance. Thank you for your help. And I tell you what, that, that's all the payback I've ever needed, I've ever wanted, and, and I get it every once in a while and it makes me feel good. So Susanna, I hope you much success in the near future. Keep the board tight, keep them going. And uh, uh, the, the board is really professional now. I mean, from in early beginnings, we were, we were a group of people trying to make things work. But I see today's organization as a business with a business model that is working. So thank you. So yeah, if go I ahead. can, yeah, go ahead, Susan. Right. Yeah. thank you. First, um, what a privilege it is to meet you. And to think about your history with SHIP. And one of the things, that, and I, I say this all the time that when I go to board meetings and I meet like, I meet Diana, right? Who's been around. And I will tell you the hours she puts in to ensuring that the museum that we're doing in Anaheim, right? The ship museum that we're doing, that the lifetime members, it makes sure that they're being included in fiestas and in Anaheim. It's like the advocacy and the tireless work 
seeing you watching her is absolutely a testament to the mission of this organization. It's not like what what I what I what I respect, value, and honor about ship members is that they're in today, but they're in forever. And I'm I don't I haven't met all the lifetime members. I, I believe I'll meet a lot of them in Anaheim. But what I hear from them is passion. What I see from them is their volunteer hours. Uh, Diana's been working with Serafine to ensure that things are going well and that we're being thoughtful and that we're being inclusive and that and so I I say to you that it's meeting you is is what's so inspiring to me because this is legacy, but it's also commitment. And as we welcome in 20, our 20,000th member, I think that membership is also a responsibility, as you, as you well noted and as you've demonstrated throughout your lifetime. And absolutely, if everyone can give back and pay forward and get involved in their communities, and come to the convention and be mentors to the younger version of ourselves that are trying to figure out their careers, trying to network, trying to figure out like, how do I get ahead, but how do I focus? And, you know, one of the things that I love about SHIP is our scholarship program. And, and one of the things that I want to share with you all is that I've become familiar with our All-In Relief Fund, which is a relief fund that we provide to students who are trying to make their rent, their car payments, that are just, they're trying to get by in life at the same time that they're going to school. And, you know, to me, it's like, how can we feed that All-In Relief Fund? Because if we're helping them, right, we're helping more of our students of our community advance and realize their dreams so that they can go out and pay it back and pay it forward. And that's what I think is so incredible about our students. Um, we're, we're, we were just, uh, Monique, one of our, our colleagues, as you all know, who heads up external relations, was reaching out to, to our scholarship recipients. And the humility and the kindness that come from our students and say, Oh, thank you very much, but I know Fulano and he needs the money more than I do. So, you know what, thank you for offering it to me, but I want to give it to, you know, someone that I know that's really struggling in school. So please, you know, give that scholarship money to them. And to me, that is, that's corazón, that's alma, that is pure passion and mission and belief and investment in, in community. So. Thank you for that. That's that's the legacy that that you all have had on this organization. Thank you, Susana. Uh, we do have a question, Lourdes. If you can open up your mic. Uh, hi, Susana Valdez. Uh, this is Lourdes. I'm a young professional mechanical engineer. I graduated in 2021. Um, I have a quick question regarding kind of like young professionals and the national conference specifically. It feels very tailored or geared towards students, which I think is great, like internships and all this stuff, but is there anything the organization is doing for young professionals as well for their development and full-time opportunities? What if some people want to transition from one industry to another one, or they're looking for opportunities within a few years after graduating or something like that? So thank you for that question, and um, I am, I'm going to start this off, but then I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. Anna and Ashley to kind of supplement what I have to say. So the aha moment I had coming into this organization is when I saw membership, and I think now, back then it was 80% undergrads, 15% uh, professionals, and the rest graduate students. I think we're now at 70 and 30 with 15% professionals and 15% um, uh, graduate students. Here's what I can say is that the organization recognizes that we can do more. What are the opportunities? Number one, um, get engaged locally. Get engaged with your chapters. Our IPC, our corporate sponsors, 
are always seeking out opportunities to provide professional development, um, mentorship. We have a great mentorship program. We have a great uh, career um, website so that folks that are thinking about changing jobs can look for other opportunities. We need to do more, but what we are doing is, I believe, very solid. We have very passionate professional members. Some I've gotten to work with a um, few of them, which are regional leaders, and they're always exploring Lourdes, how we can do more for our professional members. So one, I would say get involved locally. Two, at, when you're at convention, there's a professional track that we are being thoughtful and there's professionals on the committee that are being thoughtful about how to create and how to cultivate opportunities for professionals. Stay, this feedback is important. Become a volunteer at National Convention. Be, become a volunteer at NILA. Um, we will come up with a comprehensive program, but for right now, this is what I can offer to you. I don't know if Ashley or Anna, you want to... Um, contribute to that anything that I've missed no I think you hit it all right on the head Susanna I think we we acknowledge that that's a gap for us and that we're hoping to continue and grow and I think as we as our professional members continue to grow and become a larger and larger portion of our membership that becomes a more important and key piece for us in understanding and supporting the needs especially of our early career, career professionals um, and so just know that we are looking to continue to support. Um, I am working with one of the directors on my team specifically um, to start a committee of professional members to help get some support in rolling out some um, specific programs, webinars, newsletters, workshops that will start happening year round. So we do know that there is some stuff specifically happening at convention um, that was mentioned, but then how we can continue to expand that and grow that happening throughout the year. Um, so as you guys are all very passionate about that space too, don't, you know, let us know. We are always looking for feedback and other ways we can grow and continue to serve. Um, and the other thing that we do have that I think doesn't get enough um, visibility is our career center for people who are looking for um, ways to pivot careers or some different career coaching. Um, so there are some courses, some like, you know, tidbits, pieces in there, asynchronous stuff that you can connect with. Um, as well as right now, I just looked and we have more than 14,000 job openings. Um, and so there is a great resource that's available for you that, you know, not, convention is amazing, electric, and everyone should go. Um, but a lot of that stuff is is really sickly there too, um, and that career center piece too. So I definitely encourage you guys to use that resource, and that's a free resource for you as a ship member as well that just does not get the traction. So um, that that was it. Is there any other thing, Anna? Am I missing anything else? No, I just um, wanted to add that as um, Susanna and Ashley mentioned, this is an area, the professional uh, sector is an area where we want to grow, and as it continues to gain membership, we continue to uh, – try to figure out ways where we can improve our offerings and engagement um, activities. I know that for um, convention specifically, while being transparent, the vast majority of job openings and, and, and recruiting efforts by, the, our, by our exhibitors and, and sponsors are towards our undergrads and graduate students. However, um, I know that the possibilities and the options, opportunities for professionals are increasing. So I would not I would encourage you, if you are already planning on attending a convention, is to take advantage of the resume um, uh, review option, as well as the career center that Ashley mentioned, um, as a possibility to engage in that way. And as um, Susanna mentioned, while you're there, get engaged with our regional leaders. They're eager to talk to our professional members and, and connect with them um, and find ways to, to help you and connect you on a local level and see what other opportunities might come out of that. So. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Susana. And thank you, Ashley. Uh, Karen Santos, do you have a question or do you want to add to what has been shared at this point? So for those of you who don't know, Karen Santos is part of the National Board of Directors. So welcome, Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lazaro. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to be attending. And I did want to add on, so I am also an early professional and very involved within SHIP, continuous still from college all the way up until where I am today. We do have a little community of early professionals. If you are 
interested in engaging with, with us, we do have a, a little group chat that I set up. I'm more than happy to involve you. Uh, I know right now people are looking for some housing opportunities. So if you want to double up in room with someone, it's also a good way if you are going to a convention for, for you to have that. But uh, more than anything, I do want to touch on the fact that the RVPs are also in this group chat. So it's an easier way for you to connect, feel more kind of have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. And that's kind of where these ideas for what we can do to continue helping young professionals and early career professionals, mid-level career professionals um, on how we can continue to engage them. Uh, definitely, we welcome those conversations and I'll connect with you on the side so that uh, we can make sure that you're in that group. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I did, thank yes, go uh, ahead, Susan. go ahead, Susanna. That's my boss. So uh, as being on the board of directors executive <laughs> committee, it's, it's a, a privilege to share this moment with her. And thank you for illuminating that additional opportunity for professionals because that's, and, and I wanted to share with everyone on this call, feedback is a gift. We all believe that. And so whatever feedback, if you all see an opportunity where we can be involved and engaged as Karen, Anna, and Ashley mentioned, our RVPs are tireless volunteers. Um, and they're always trying to think of convenings and gatherings where professionals can come together. I, I, I think the way uh, one of them articulated is that when you come in as a student, you build your community. And as you become a professional, you build your network, right? And so the community supports the network and the network supports the community. So. Um, there's a lot of interest, and 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 thank you, Karen, for sharing that with us. Uh, along that line, uh, we've been talking about you know support for the students, how to get to the convention, register for the convention. But one of the important things, and I believe Karina Naranjo reached out to me and said, "Hey, this is going to be my first convention. And I know that Sanya is also her first convention. For some of the individuals that are here, is going to be their first convention. So I would like for Susana to share some tips or tidbits on besides paying for the convention, registering for the hotel. What should you, as a student, do in preparation for the convention from your perspective, Susana? Well, that's a very good question, and it's something that this team thinks about all the time. So one of the important tools that uh, the team has created is a know before you go. Video, consultings, gatherings, emails. And so I have to say that the, the cadence of communication about convention has started weeks ago, it continues. And so to your point, we want to make sure that students uh, come prepared and ready to meet the moment. And a lot of them have heard from friends, relatives, previous experience, how to prepare, but we have dedicated resources mm -hmm. to students to really walk them through how to be most prepared with respect to the career fair, with respect to where each networking opportunity is going to be, each events are being held, where the lunches are being. So it's really allowing them to organize themselves before they go. So I know that know before you go is a huge tool. Ashley, Anna, am I missing um, other tools besides our emails and our web chats? where we invite students uh, to learn more about preparing for convention. Yeah, I think you had that called out exactly, Susanna. That know before you go session, intending watching the recording is gonna be helpful. Um, I also know our regional leadership teams are very actively involved in ensuring that everyone that's going is ready at whatever level you are. Um, several of the regions are having like specific um, sessions as well. So um, there's lots of different things happening um, at different levels. And so just making sure that you plug into multiples of those, I think there's lots of best practices and different things that you can hear across the board. Um, so I just, you know, get all of that information. And then once you're registered 
for convention, I believe you start receiving a weekly convention like update letter, which will have all of that information in it too, as well as just staying subscribed into like Ship Nation and all of those pieces. But um, there are lots of people. I know we've also talked, Susan and I have talked about our mentoring track of just making, we have a mentoring moment um, in our mentorship track where you can connect in with someone for one time and just say like, I just want to talk to someone about convention. Like, tell me about what it's like, because even as a staff, as a professional, the first time that I attended convention, nothing really mentally prepares you for that as much as I'd heard heard about it and talked about it um, and still so like but I was more ready for that just because I had been hearing about it for months and months so I think just connecting to and with um, the mentorship program could be another great opportunity for that as well so I'll drop that link here in the chat um, and someone did also ask me deadline to upload resume so I will get that in the chat as well so give me a moment and I'll do a little research and get that stuff here thank you so much thank I you would so say much. that yes. chapter leaders and regional leaders like they're always your go-to twos. Um, they're accessible. They, they can be very specific to um, your personal experience as a student going. Um, so I, I feel like I, there, there's, we have a lot to cover, but we're trying to cover it all so that students can be prepared. And I've also learned that someone on the ship staff walks around with scissors and sewing kits to make sure that our students look amazing and they're put together and all of our resume re reviewing workshops, I've heard wonderful things about them and how people feel like that resume review um, workshop that we have really illuminates their how they can talk about their strengths and what they bring to the table. So we're, we're trying to cover it and making sure that they're as prepared as possible. I, I have another question for you. Can you share a specific ship cultural value or tradition that you see has had a positive impact on professionals' careers? So I'm five months into the organization, and I will speak to what I, I would actually like Karen to maybe um, come in and, and join me on this answer. But one of the things with respect to professionals, as I go back, as I think back and I go back to the conversations that I've had and, and the two, like the two, the two initiatives or the two gifts outcomes that I always hear about is how ship builds community before your career and how ship builds networking in your career. And so I feel that with our IPCs, the fact that we have over 85 incredible, we have more than that, but the, the 85 key sponsors that are on everybody's desired wish list to work for um, and the companies that are so eager and leaning in where they bring 40, 50 of their staff to interview our students and our and network with our professionals to see what opportunities that they can give to them. That's a, I've, I've worked with corporate sponsors before, and that's a very transactional relationship. When it comes to ship, these corporate partners are engaged. They care. We, I had a conversation with, um, I'm trying to remember who it was at an IPC meeting in Houston, where they're, they were basically saying, okay, we, we were able to recruit, like, 10 amazing ship students two or three years ago and now we feel like they've hit this like ceiling like they're, they're trying to figure out how to advance and grow in their careers and so we need to work with you and we'd like to consult with you how we can advance them to the next level and to me i think that's the next frontier of our conversation it's like not only how you launch your career with ship and our corporate partners but how you grow in advance in your career and what is our role and responsibility and our resources to help you do that. So I hope that that's answered some of your question. I don't know, Karen, if you want to um, pipe in or chime in with anything yeah. else. So I, I do also want to say that as much as it is for an opportunity for us to continue engaging as organizations with SHIP, it's also an opportunity for us to engage between organizations. An example of this is 
IBM and Bank of America came together during last year's conference, and we did a really great panel on women leadership. And that's kind of something that, you know, it was unique, it was different, but we're in completely different industries. But it's something that because of the work that we both know we're doing, we wanted to come in and collaborate together. And so going on to Susanna's point, it's definitely something that you can take as a networking prior to your career, but even something that you can continue to do and grow throughout. And the opportunities to get involved are honestly endless. I think that's kind of the beauty of SHIP because we are a nonprofit and we are an organization that is filled with innovative minds. We have the power to build programming based off of the needs of really what our membership wants. And if the IPCs hear that, they want to do that. Bank of America has been so on board with wanting to do financial literacy workshops for our members, and now they're actually engaging in opportunities like that because they heard the feedback directly. And so also going back to Susanna's old point, feedback is truly a gift for us. Thank you. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, we had a couple questions in the chat. One of them was, can uh, high school students attend the conference? My perspective is, yes, they can attend, but I suggest that you go with a guardian or somebody that's older so that they, if you're under a minor, you can actually be accompanied by that person, right? The other question was, uh, how many copies or versions of resumes? My suggestion for that question is, look at the companies that you really want to target and try to tailor your resume to that particular business, to that particular corporation, to that particular position, right? That's my suggestion. Um, Lourdes, did you have your hand up? Yes, I was just going to say most companies tend to have a QR code, so you upload your resume mm -hmm. digitally. I don't know how much paper is going on nowadays, but yeah, they usually have a very specific link you just submit it to. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, one other question for Susana. With your current time of five months as a ship CEO at the national level, what are the three main value propositions for students and professionals that you would like to see come to reality? That's a really good question, a great question. Um, the value propositions that I come to this organization is, I keep asking the question is, what is our value proposition to our members, right? And so we know that with respect to building community, um, engaging community, helping with your career, supporting you culturally, supporting you in, in your academic studies, supporting you in your career, all that is, is based on the core values of SHIP, right? And so I feel like with having a core value of being fam familia, family, connected, committed, and that, that interest to pay it forward and to pay it back is such a core value that is a testament to the longstanding and the, the, the success of this organization. I'm, I'm going to say this again, for a nonprofit to be here 50 years later, but thriving at the level that SHIP is, is absolutely extraordinary. I did, I've done nonprofit consulting and it's, you know, if they get to 15 or 20 years, it's always because one leader, an executive director, like is carrying the organization on his or her back, right? What SHIP has done, to, to Mike's point earlier, is that the growth and advancement and the thoughtful investment of how to support members with the professional staff is key. How everyone at SHIP thinks about how we live in support to one another, a key point that you all have brought up is we're doing great with undergraduates, so what do we need to do for our professionals? So it's that mindfulness, it's living with intention and staying true to the core values that SHIP was built on. I don't think that I have anything better. I don't think I have anything greater. I don't have, think I have anything different, but just ensuring 
that we live up to those values because it's very easy to get distracted and to um, migrate away to something, you know, either someone is saying, oh, you can get this grant or this gift if you change or you modify your mission. We're not interested in that. We, we know that there are going to be 10 million STEM jobs in the next 10 years. Our job, our responsibility, our passion is to prepare our community, to engage more in our community, to meet that moment. So it's waking up with that commitment and that passion every day. Anna, that's great. Great response. Great to great to hear. Um, I do have another question. Can can you describe a pivotal moment in your career when your cultural background as Latina Mexicana played a significant role in your success or resilience? So. Um, Lazaro, you're coming with the, with the best questions. Um, I have to say that being a Latina in Washington for 11 years, working in the House, the Senate, the White House, and Department of Labor, when I was at the White House, I was one of 11 Latinos that were in the White House. And at that time, I didn't have a graduate degree. I just had an undergraduate degree. So... I'll never forget when this person that I admired so much in Washington said to me, you know, you, you walk into a room and you think that everybody in the room has Ivy League degrees, you know, they're lawyers, they're this or whatever, but it's that spirit that you carry that, that I am here. And I remember saying this, uh, I hope this doesn't go public, but if it does, when I applied to Columbia University and it was really hard, I remember sitting down with the dean and I said to him, this is not the last time you're going to see me. I'm going to get into Columbia. Either I come in through the front door, I come in through the chimney, I come in through the back door, or I come in through the window. I'm getting into this university. And so why do I say that? Because... 30 years ago, 20 years ago, being Latina, being Mexican American, it's like it was, it, it, people didn't see you as equal, right? And especially if you didn't have the education background to match what your role was. But every day I would think of my parents, I would think of my family, I would think of El Paso where I was born and raised. And it's like, because of them, I'm here. Y la lucha is like so important. Like every day when I advance, I just want to make sure that I'm able to, to help others um, that come and that I can help. And so, yes, at times was I, uh, have I faced discrimination? I have. But in the end, I didn't let it deter me. I, I actually utilized it to inspire me and to continue to pursue. And so that's how I say to people, every setback is a setup for a comeback. Always remember that because that setback is temporary. It's how you utilize it to advance yourself and to advance others that matters. Awesome. Thank you, great response. Uh, I do have one last question, but I'm gonna open it up to the audience to see if they have one or two more questions. So. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience for Susana, who is the ship CEO at this current moment? Okay, this is your opportunity. Uh, I would like Victor Colominas Ruiz, uh, coming as a person from Spain at an early, older age, you did not grow up with ship. You did not know ship at college, university level. So you found ship by being sent over by HP or whatever corporation you were at that point to a career fair, right? Um, what is your perception of SHIP and what would you tell Susana to continue doing to carry the organization forward? I appreciate you throwing me the ball. Yeah, uh, also, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. That, 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 that's, a, that's an unfair question because like, 
uh, you know, uh, somebody that's out from outside, just like, yeah, t tell sheep what to do, right? Well, well <laughs> but, uh, it's feedback, but, uh, it's feedback. <laughs> no, 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 I get it, I get it. No, that's actually, uh, it's actually very interesting. Uh, my experience with sheep is the exact one that you you describe. I have actually been in sheep for what's going to be a year now, like in September, so I'm super new. Um, but I've been involved a lot in uh, this kind of organization, not so much focused on Hispanic uh Hispanic in professional, Hispanic people in professional settings, but like a lot in young development and like association and political action. And one thing that I have seen, and again, just like humble personal opinion and personal experience is that I feel like the local chapters sometimes don't really don't know what to do, right? I feel like SHIP is very, very, very focused and tailored for people uh, as we were saying before, like high school, uh, university, and people jumping into the professional career. But once the profession, like people are in a professional career, besides peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, I feel like it, there's a big gap on how chapters feel that they can have an impact. Um, for me, it's normal, right? Because it's very hard to approach this. But there's, I feel like that's a big challenge, right? Like to to make cheap have like 50 more years of success. I think what's very important is to make sure that we can support every member to achieve the maximum they can achieve. And right now, I hear chapters around me, and again, that might be a localized thing, but I see, I hear chapters around me struggling with this, right? If we, with inspiration, uh, and, and just for, for a small side quest that I'm going to explain and then come back to this. Uh, I'm a, I work at HP, and at HP, I was in charge of the Next Generation Impact Network, the way we call it. And and we had this a similar case with them, right? Uh, every single local office, they made like their activities. But if you had a very proactive team, you could achieve a lot. And you had like some teams that were not so proactive, they were having a hard time knowing what to do. And one way that we bridged that was through making sure that we could connect different teams, different offices, and make sure that they could exchange best practices and even leverage from each other's into other's events, right? So that's something that maybe SHIP can, can do. Uh, because yeah, as we said, right, it's a, it's a pool of talents, a pool of people that are willing to work hard. I think it's very near hand of our culture. And at the same time, I hear, you know, chapters are struggling on how can they be useful for, for others. Thank you, Victor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Mike Cruz, do you have your hand up, sir? Yeah, I, I, this, this, this chat always gets me thinking, Suzanne. So I, I have to go back to this, uh, the change, the maturity of this organization that I've seen over the last 40 years. In the beginning, the focus was on students. Mm -hmm. We were a young organization, and we did focus a lot on students. So over the last 20 years, I've seen the change coming because the organization is maturing, and those students are now young professionals. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of the young professionals today are asking, what is SHIP doing for me? And so part of the maturing process of this organization is going, is going to be that transition because I've been hearing the same story about professional uh, support for this, uh, young professional support in this organization. So it's been ongoing for about 20 years, I, I would say at least. But it, it's because the, the uh, organization is maturing and the people that we have are maturing. And it, it, it's always been a, a, a tale. So uh, I'm hoping you much success in acknowledging this effort. Our local chapter has taken that on last year when they said we're going to focus on professionals as well as students, 50-50, and uh, they're trying to make that happen. So uh, that career center, I just looked at it real quickly. That's a, that's a great start, but we need to get that information down to the professional chapter leadership. I think that's crucial, you know, through NILA or through whatever medium, but we need to keep tact. Uh, and I will, I will, I will ask my uh, president, uh, has he been connected up with this to see how that's going? Because that's what we need to do. The, the, our professional leadership has to take that handle and make it work for the local professionals. I mean, you have the overall handle. Uh, you you got to keep it going, keep the support up, and. Uh, that's going to be the next major phase I see in this organization. Thank you. Mike. Thank you Mike, for sharing that. Thank you. One final question and then we'll close it up. Uh, really short from you, Susanna. 
What advice do you wish someone had given you early on in your career? Uh, leave aside being a CEO of SHIP, leave aside working 30 years in a nonprofit. But I want you to think about, you know, as you're, as you're stepping off and, you know, starting your career, what advice would you wish somebody had given you? Um, it's, it's interesting because I, I get a lot of questions about this imposter syndrome that women face in the workplace or Latinos uh, face in the workplace. And so I uh, also had my struggles throughout my career with imposter, like, should I be here? Do I deserve to be here? Um, should, you know, what, should I be somewhere else? And I think that First of all, I'm a, I'm a big sports fan. I'm big into football. And there was a coach many years ago, Tony Sperano. He was briefly with the Dolphins, I think maybe a year or two years, even though I'm not a Dolphins fan. Uh, sorry to those of you that are. But he always, he, one of the phrases that he said always at press conference was trust the preparation. And I think that that's one thing. It's like I always prepared. I always tried to be prepared. And I never trusted that preparation. I always felt I was missing something like only if I was this, only if I did that, only if I got a law degree, only if I got this or if I, and so you are you like there's everyone is a unique gift to this in this world. You have your own gifts, you have your own talents and they matter and they stand out and you're, your 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 journey right is part of that experience so trust the preparation and enjoy the journey don't stress yourself out about your journey if you work hard and if you keep in mind that every setback is a setup for a comeback that 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 would have released my my stress that i placed on myself in my youth and throughout my career. That's a great response. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, you know, being respectful of your time, we're going to close it out. Thank you so much, Susana. I'd like to acknowledge you for your support and for being the SHIP CEO at the national level. Thank you so much, Anna, Patrick, for helping me set this up with Susana. Ashley, thank you so much for helping square away all the little details behind the scenes, getting this squared away. Mr. Mike Cruz, thank you for being here. Karen Santos, Victor Colomina Ruiz, Clara, Clara Sarok everybody in the line thank you so much for being here i hope that you enjoy this cafecito chat this wednesday and we'll see you next time for the next wednesday cafecito chats muchas gracias hasta luego gracias thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.